at the end. Here at the end. Here at the end. Here at the end. Congratulations! You are at the sign and submit portion. So remember that FSA ID that we created before we even started this whole process? Now you're going to sign and submit with that. We're going to walk you through that process, show you how to click the sign and submit to confirm your FAFSA, and do the exact same for your parents. If your parents don't have a social security number, don't worry about it. There's a workaround for that too. I told you it's not that bad. And we're going to just get this done and get it on the way to your school so that you can get the aid that you need for school. Yay! <laughs> hey everyone, take a look at your FAFSA sign and submit portion. See how FAFSA lets you know, hold on, you're not done yet. You still need to submit it. So before you submit, FAFSA is going to give you the opportunity to review everything that you've done. So see how it walks you through step by step. I can see my student demographics. I can scroll through all of that. My school selection, my dependency status, my parent demographics, my parent financials, continued, student financials, and sign and submit. So obviously you'd wanna go through that a little bit slower, but just double check. And if you did go back and put something in incorrectly, you can click previous, go and change that. And don't forget, even if you submit and you see that you made a mistake, you can go back and change your FAFSA. But for right now, let's click continue. So read before proceeding. This is essentially a legal disclaimer just stating that you are going to do with the money that you receive exactly what you intend to do. So you understand that you're going to use this aid to cover the cost of attending an institution of higher learning, which can be to your school, for your school, that you're just using this to obtain education, that you are not in default on any of your student loans, that you don't owe money back on a federal grant. You will notify your school if you default on a federal student loan, which will be later, and if you will not receive a federal Pell Grant for more than one school for the same period of time. So you're going to deal with your student loans later once you're done with school, and you're saying, when I get this money, I'm not going to shift it and share it with multiple different schools. You're just going to do exactly what you intend to do, which is go to college and pay for it. So you understand that by signing this electronically using your username and password, you understand that your information is accurate, that you filed everything, and if you do not do so and you intentionally put something in that's incorrect, you will be fined. You may go to prison, so let's not do that. So you're just going to check right here to say I, Helen, last name, agree to the terms outlined above, and then sign your FAFSA. So we click here. And see how it's going to say a parent must sign the FAFSA form. So remember, we did this as a dependent student. So it shows that the student signed with their FSA ID, and now it says parent signature needed. So there's going to be different ways to provide a parent signature. Let's click and take a look. So which parent are you? Parent one or parent two? I'm going to pretend to be parent one, but your actual parent one or parent two would have to be the one to sign this. So they are also going to have to agree to the same disclaimer, understanding that they are who they say they are. And you check here to say that you agree to the terms outlined above. Let's continue. So now we have signature options. So you can enter the parent's FSA ID. Now, maybe your parent is unable to create an FSA ID, but they still need to sign this as you are a dependent student. Well, there's other options to sign and submit as you see right here. So let's click that. And it says signature options. So you can sign electronically with FSA ID. You can submit without signatures, which allows you to submit it now if your parent is not available, but you will have to return later to sign. So the best option if you cannot immediately do it with the FSA ID is to print a signature page. You click that option and it's going to say print signature page. And here it is. So it has a barcode along the top. You can read the following, which gives you the same disclaimers. 
Students not required to sign because we put in an FSA ID. So FAFSA knows that it's me actually doing this application. But see how it says right here, parent signature and date? That's where the parent will sign. We didn't have a preparer, so that's why it says they're not required to sign here. And here's the address, Federal Student Aid Programs. It's going to give you the post office box as well as the actual location and the zip code. If you have questions, of course, call the Federal Student Aid Information Center. So see how it says print right here and print right here. So that's going to give you your options to print and it's going to say preparing preview. <laughs> Double check and make sure everything looks good and then you're able to click print right there. I'm going to cancel just because I don't want to print this sample, but that's the process that you would take. I'm going to click finish here. So see how it says signature page printed? That's letting FASTA know that you have seen that page, you've printed it out, and it's on the way. Therefore, you can click right here, submit my FAFSA form now. <gasps> Congratulations, Helen! Your FAFSA form was successfully submitted to federal student aid. Notice here along the top, it's going to give you a confirmation number so you can see that. Also, it explains a little bit about what happens next. You'll receive an email version of this page. In three to five business days, you'll receive an email notifying you that your form that you just submitted was processed. It'll be made available to the schools that you listed and they'll use it to determine how much aid you can receive. This is where they're going to create a financial aid package for you, which will explain the scholarships and grants that you're eligible to get based on what you did on FAFSA. I told you paying for school is a breeze. Your schools will contact you if they need any more information. And if you have any questions, contact your schools. So if we keep scrolling, we can see that it's also going to give the estimated expected family contribution. So of course, this is a demo, so it's not going to have accurate information, but it's going to show what is relevant directly to you. And it just gives you a little bit more information. But other than that, you are done. It must be really exciting. Hang tight, and we are going to have a part 10 where we just explain to you a little bit about your next steps. And as always, thanks so much for watching and good luck, South Carolina.